Hey guys, what's up? Snippity here. How the fuck y'all doing? Alright, so today I'm bringing you guys the second part to my Road to Certification video. If you guys didn't watch my first one, which was the 1 through 10 questions, you guys should totally go check that out. And yeah, so basically, once again, the Road to Certification is an exam, is an exam, I guess, that you can call it, test, whatever, quiz. Alright, so offered by Adobe to see how much you know about Photoshop and today I have 11 through 20 which is the next set of questions alright so let's get right into this basically well not basically alright so first question is how do you switch back and forth between images well we all know that we can just go right here to the tabs and switch back and forth between our images but what happens is when you have too many images over here and you can't reach a certain image you, you can go over here to window and then all your images will be open right here at the bottom this is the image that I'm well the file that I'm in right now and this is the next file that would come up and you can do that with as many images as you have open so it's going back alright so that's how to do that number 12 says how do you reveal the background now to reveal the background is super simple and you some people really overthink this it's all you have to do is make a selection and then you hit delete and this is what they would call revealing the background. It's that simple. Something that you, well, that I, even I overthought it. I thought it was something else. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, that's how you reveal the background. Number 13 says, how do you select the inverse of a selection? All right, so basically, whether you make a selection with the pen tool or just drag out a selection, to do the inverse, you would go to select and then you would go to inverse and it would select everything around it and then when you would if you hit the delete key everything in here would stay and everything out here oops everything out here would get deleted like so so that's how you would do that and the command well the shortcut for it it would be control shift i to do it so control shift and i to inverse a selection and that was number 13 no, number 14 says how do you save a selection save a selection is really simple just make a selection whether it be the pen tool or the marquee tool like I showed you earlier and then you would just go up to here select and then you would hit save selection you would name it let's say ran random selection or whatever and then you would say it would be saved now for Number 15 says, how do you load a selection? Now you go to the same place. You would go to select and then load selection. And then from here, you would select random selection, which is the name of it. And you hit OK, and it would load your selection. And you do whatever you want, invert it, delete it, go back, go back, just delete that part, whatever you want to do with it. And that was number 15. All right, what is a non-destructive mask? I said none, non, it's none yeah non okay 16 what is a non-destructive mask a non-destructive mask is a is like a layer added on to your onto your layer okay it's a mask added onto your layer and it's down here it's this square with the circle in the middle and it adds this right here next to your image and it links it so instead of okay okay let's start all over okay so basically non-destructive editing is when you edit when you can always go back and make changes to it a, n a, dis a destructive edit would be erasing directly you see right here you can't there's you can't well you can undo it but there's a certain amount of times when you edit something that you can't go back so another way of doing this of erasing would be by adding a mask down here and instead of using the eraser tool you would use the brush tool and then black would be to erase and white would be to reveal so this way you can always go back and then if you just want to get rid of the whole mask you can just right click it delete layer mask and it deletes the mask and you get your layer back just as it was before so that's pretty simple guys and something really that comes in handy when you're doing photo manipulations and such and things like that because after you do a certain amount of edits you, you're not going to go all the way back and then you can have to go and redo your changes so it just saves a lot of time to do that 
And then number 17 says, how do you convert an image to a smart object? To convert an image to a smart object, it's the easiest thing ever. You would just go to your layer. Okay, let's use this example. By the way, guys, this is an image I got off the internet, so don't think that's me or a relative or anybody. I don't know who the hell that is. So you would right click the layer and then press convert to smart object. And then you would, if you would shrink it down, you would get this bounding box or you, sh or you size it up. It would do that. And it converting to a smart object basically what it does it keeps all the information stored so that you won't lose quality when shrinking or resizing your image it's pretty simple and it's something that comes really handy when you resize an image a couple of times because after resizing and changing it a bunch of times you will start to lose pixels well not pixels old data and then it will just start looking all nasty and blurry and that was number 17 Number 18 says, how do you erase the red eye out of a picture? Now, this is the reason I have this creepy picture over here, because I'm tired of seeing this already. So, to get rid of the red eye in images, now, I don't, I can't really tell if this was from a photograph or if it was done in Photoshop, but either way, you would go over here to the, it should be a bandage on your, on your tool palette. It should be a bandage. You want to hold down on it, and then you would go to, down here where it says red eye tool. And this tool is, oh, hold on, I got to rasterize it because it was a smart object so this tool basically does the whole process for you getting rid of the black um, not the black the red eye for you and all you have to do is click once and it gets rid of the red eye for you you can do it over here again and it's that simple it just gets rid of it this works either way it worked whether it was the red eye from cameras or not nowadays you don't really get that effect not that I've seen you know with new modern cameras you don't really get it but on old style cameras you usually got that red eye effect a lot when you would turn on the flash and yeah so number 19 says how do you group layers grouping layers what you want to do is go over here to your layers panel you wanna select all the layers that you wanna group let's say I wanna group all these text layers right here I would click the first one and then I would go down here hold shift and then click on the last layer and it would select all of them then what you want to do is you want to go to this little tab icon right here with a down arrow click on it and then select new group from layers creating a group from the layers you have selected <coughs> excuse me and then what you want to do is just name them I'm just naming questions I get I guess and then here they are they're all grouped in one layer Oh all the questions in one layer and that's how you do that and now the last one says what is the sunspot style now this is a question that I have personally seen on the certification exam what the sunspot style is is basically when you would go double click in a layer and then you would go to let's say where was it styles up here that's where it was and it would ask you for the sunspot style you would go right here to this one. This is the sunspot style. It's just this yellow square looking thing. There's a bunch of styles, but this is the one they wa they're going to want you to select. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe Adobe likes sun style. I don't know what it is, but it's the sunspot style. You select that, and then you hit OK, and it applies it to your layer, which is this one. And it has a weird effect because, yeah, sunspot. undo that wait wait all right got it so yeah that's that guys and for you guys wondering why I haven't had a video out in a while is because well why it's taking me a while to upload videos I am working on videos for you guys but currently I'm working and with working I'm trying to save up for a gaming computer so I can start making more gaming videos I really want to get into gaming soon but it's taking forever to get this computer and that's what I've been working on so it's kind of hard for me to get videos out but I'm still trying my best to help you guys and whatnot. So just look forward to that. I can guarantee you guys a bunch of videos when I first get my computer. I'm going to be nonstop recording, nonstop playing, day and night, all of that good stuff. So make sure to stay tuned into my channel and expect some more. This is Snippety signing out. Peace.